Good evening, it's At Love Clark. We're going to go over some World Watch news from a non-Babylonian Christian perspective with Bible prophecy. Germany to Afghanistan, you're not alone in anti-terror fight. German soldiers wait near a cargo plane in Kabul. Afghanistan. Okay. They're waiting. Germany to Afghanistan. You're not alone in an anti terror fight. The Germans and the Afghans are old friends whose friendship has no end. German Foreign Minister Frank Walter Steinmeier told Afghanistan on August 30th during a visit to the war-torn country. Arriving at the airport in Kabul, Steinmeier wore a bulletproof vest and a helmet and traveled to Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's palace by helicopter since driving by in the since driving in the capital city is considered more dangerous. Steinmeier used his visit to celebrate a hundred years of German Afghan friendship. The German representatives on the Niedermeyer Hintic expedition traveled to Afghanistan in nineteen fifteen to convince <coughs> excuse me. To the German representatives on the Niedermeyer Hinden expedition traveled to Afghanistan in 1915 to convince the Afghans to support Germany in World War I. The two nations signed a treaty of friendship early the following year. The people of Afghanistan continue to count on Germany's solidarity, Steinmeier later said. Through our varied involvement in civilian reconstruction and development, our contribution to the training and advice mission, resolute support, and our financial support for the Afghan security forces. Germany has 850 troops in Afghanistan, the largest contingent besides the United States. It is the third largest financial contributor after the United States and Japan, providing about $4.7 billion for civilian reconstruction and development since the United States-led invasion of Afghanistan in 2001. Why is Germany interested in Afghanistan? Look on the far side of Iran, trumpet editor. Chief Gerald Flurry wrote, 2013, and you see 4,400 German soldiers staying in its eastern neighbor. Afghanistan, even while American troops pull out, Washington is eager to get out, but Berlin has something else in mind. Germany has surrounded Iran and radical Islam, just as God prophesied it would. Soon that whirlwind is going to start rotating and whirlwinding against the, and whirling against the king of the south like a well-armed, probably nuclear-armed vortex. Read the full article, The Whirlwind Prophecy, at trumpet.com slash go slash 10678. Now, here we go. South China Sea belongs to China. Chinese Vice Administer, Commander of the People's Liberator Liberation Army, Navy, North Sea Fleet, insisted on September 14th. that 
the South China Sea belongs exclusively to China. Okay? It, the, the South China Sea, as the name indicates, is a sea area that belongs to China and the sea from the Han Dynasty a long time ago where the Chinese people have been working and producing from the sea. He said at the first Sea Lord Rusi International Sea Power Conference in London, Yuan's statement came in response to criticism about China's land reclamation activities in South China Sea. With this ongoing project, China is, re is building artificial islands in disputed Excuse me. China is building artificial islands in disputed territories throughout the South China Sea and converting them into small military bases. China's land reclamation project has fueled tensions in Asia, which have contributed to a region wide arms buildup. UN's emphatic Comments indicated that the indicate that those tensions will not soon subside. Okay, so that's what's going on in South China Sea. United Europe to Britain. Get on board or get out. Europe must integrate much more closely. And Britain must either join in or leave. French President Francois Hollande said on October 7th, speaking in a rare joint appearance before the European Parliament with German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Holland laid out his vision of what amounts to be a European super state. We need to keep our eyes on the long term for the Federation of Nation States, which must Remain our horizon, he said. He called for Europe to form a common defense policy and coast guard, a joint asylum system, and new Eurozone institutions. Reacting to criticism of the European integration from the United Kingdom, Independence Party leader Nigel Farage Ferege, Holland said, "If we don't want to strengthen, if we don't want to strengthen Europe, then there's only one road. The only road for those. You hear that train? I live in a train town. If we don't want to strengthen Europe, then there's only one road. The only road for those. The only road for those who are not convinced of Europe is to leave." Europe. China to forgive debts. Mind the, don't mind those pictures, those are Japanese. China to forgive debts at least developed nations. Of, it, of least developed nations. Hmm, that sounds very interesting and tricky. And good, almost. Chinese President Xi Jinping or Chinese President Xi Jinping said on September 26th that Beijing would forgive debts owed to China by the world's least developed nations and will give billions of dollars to poor nations to hasten their development. Wow, they're doing exactly what America should be doing. Should, uh, or the way that they act like their politics go is what they should be doing, but they're not doing that. Of course they're not doing that. China's looking out for China, and they're smarter than America in this regard. Excuse me, sorry to interrupt. The addressing a United Nations Summit on Development Goals, Xi said China also plans to assist in no fewer than 600 overseas projects in the next five years. To solve various global challenges, including the recent refugee crisis in Europe, 
the fundamental solution while in seeking peace and realizing development. As I said, only the development can eliminate the causes of the conflicts. Analysts say the moves help China to deflect criticism regarding its heavy and often exploitative trade with developing nations in Africa and elsewhere. It will also help China to bolster its influence in resource-rich regions. The strategy is also designed to portray the emerging Chinese superpower as a more generous alternative to the United States. Wasn't that interesting? My wife is having dreams about China coming and torturing her poor daughter. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's move on. I think we got a little minute. Japan to let soldiers fight overseas, making moves. J Japanese soldiers could soon see action in international territories. Uh-oh, sounds like bad news for you. You sound like history repeating itself, but with different nations. Just like when they dragged Brit Britain, dragged America into their wars. Okay, listen to this. If I can get through it. Japan's parliament passed a landmark law on September 19th that allows the Japanese military to fight in foreign conflicts for the first time since World War II. Before this law, Japan's military was constitutionally forbidden, forbidden to take part in any actions and not related to the direct defense of Japanese territory. The new law allows Tokyo to send troops to international conflicts where they can cooperate with the United States and other allies. The legislation passed despite heated objections from several parliament members and much of the Japanese public. Some critics of the law say it violates Japanese, Japan's pacifist Constitution, which renounces the use of force as a means for Japan to settle international disputes. America should accept that policy. Other opponents fear that the new law will make Japan America's deputy sheriff, allowing Washington to drag Tokyo into America's numerous self-serving conflicts. The law is likely to be challenged in court, but authorities expect it to pass the hurdles. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his political allies want Japan to become a full-fledged military power once again, and the new law is a major stride in that direction. Okay, this guy's name is Shinzo Abe. Well, I know this one Abe, they say his name was Abraham, and he definitely was told to leave his country, walk away from it. Maybe you should walk away. Anyway, we have any time? Got a little time for this. Iran precision to missile program. Iran fired its first precision-guided ballistic missile on October 11th, just hours before its parliament approved the generalities of the nuclear deal struck in July. The legislators have been denied access to the specifics of the deal. The EMAD missile is an advanced form of Iran's Shabab 3 and can strike the per periphery of Israel and Europe. And on August 29th, Television address Iranian president declared that his nation is not committed to the restrictions on its missile program that the United Nations Security Council has put in place to govern Iran's ballistic missile program. Following the mud launch, Iran, Iran, Hassan derelicted his nation's late intent to ignore the UN. Resolution, we don't ask permission from anyone to strengthen our defense and missile capabilities. 
an Iranian Shahab 3 missile.